Okay, I'm going to talk about my Blu-ray player, the professional one I got with the Dolby Vision, the UB820, whatever it's called, the Panasonic. I'll have the exact title on my video. This is an update. I'm going to do an update every so often because people always talk about Blu-ray players. They have problems and whatnot. All I'm going to say is that on my player, for the most part, works pretty good. Unlike my other players, my other Blu-ray players, like I got one from Goodwill and I, you don't expect anything that's used to work 100%. Sometimes I have to eject it and put it back in again um, when I buy you um, plays from other places because um, they, they've been played. You play movies on it over and over and over. It wears it down. This play, for the most part, works great. It does upscale the DVDs the best out of any player I ever used. But here's the issue with that. It still doesn't look as good as me using my 32-inch TV with an upscale DVD player. Um, with a 32-inch TV and an upscale DVD player, I get the pretty much the same quality as if um, I watched it on a CRT or something. Because pixel density and all that. It looks wonderful. But for some reason, when I watch something like um, older shows like The West Wing, the um, upscaling, does, it doesn't really um, do any good. Which means I have to watch it on a TV that has a good combo filter or something like my Weather that I bought that's a flat screen. That does really good with standard def content. I can watch my laser discs on it. Um, this player plays really good though. A lot of people complain that it doesn't work, it's um, not built that well. I agree with people when they said it felt a little cheap, which it did. It's not very heavy. It's kind of light. It doesn't feel like it has, but it works very good for me. And I've, I've had no problems with the player and since the day I bought it. I, I have three of them just in case. Because you got to remember, it said stockpile. I didn't pay for them. I, I, I had got a credit for it. There was no way I was going to pay $400 for three plays. End up paying $1,200 altogether. No, no way. Even for one play, that was too much. But I got a big refund on a laptop that was several thousand dollars. So I was able to go out and buy a bunch of TVs and stuff and stockpile and all equipment I would need. So I won't have to spend it in the future if TV breaks or my Blu-ray player fails. This is a great player. It's going to future-proof you. It's really the best player that you can buy in a store. That $1,000 player, I'll tell you the advantage. Panasonic sells, I, I, I don't remember the model number, but it's a Panasonic player that's over $1,000. And I can look that up right now. Um, and it has the, it has all these capabilities that, um, that the um, A20 does not. But it's really, you, I don't see why anyone would need this except for, except for it being an all region player. I didn't know that. Um, and that's probably why it's so expensive. Um, okay, here it is. The Panasonic UB9000, I think it, it is. But I'm gonna... Yeah, that's about $1,100. It's all THX certified and all that other shit. IMAX probably too. I think it has something to do with I. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, I want to read this to you um, just to make sure I get it right. Okay, um... It says, reference class ultra HD 4K Blu-ray player with high dynamic range playback for the ultimate home theater experience. Notice when I read, I don't stutter. <laughs> Enjoy your library of special edition Blu-ray DVDs of stream content with, with spectacular theater quality video and audio power supply, um, AC 120V 60 Hertz. Cinema worthy picture, Hollywood cinema processor, yeah, our old Adobe Vision, we know that. Somewhere it said here, um, I'm trying to find it where it said, um, playback, uh, oh, there was something in here that said about it being an all region player. I'm trying to, oh, there was something in here that said it. Um, 
Now I'm, I'm missing out on here. Jeez, questions. Let me look at region. That's what I'm going to put. You know, this is what's good about this um, Amazon thing when you can search the questions. Based on the product information, the Panasonic 4K Ultra UB9000P1K can play Blu-ray discs from region A and region 1. Oh, wait, no. Can play region A1. Oh, what the hell? There was, maybe it was another player. There was another one of these. There was another player out there for Panasonic that listed on the top that it would play all the regions. So I'm not understanding this now because that's what I read before. But there was one of them. And it was um the expensive um, Panasonic. Maybe someone modified it. I don't know. But um that would be the only reason to get it. But the thing is, mostly... It's not entirely true what they say about 4K. And I, I did research and I found out that not every single 4K is completely region free. If they have um, Blu-ray content that's on it, like a special feature that's in a different region, it won't play on your player. That's what I, I was told online. So that means you, you have problems. So that, that, that's what happened with Baywatch. It's an all region disc and you, you can play it but as soon as you try to watch the um not the different region, which is um the standard deaf copy of the show, it won't play. It only plays the blue Blu-ray copy. Even when even when when you play the Blu-ray copy, it still glitches. Um, that will be the advantage if you're gonna spend big. You, I would go for that. But here's the dis another disadvantage, a disadvantage to this product is the fact that even if you do get a region free blu-ray player um that's fine for the blu-rays but if you have any dvds they're not going to look good on your tv even with these huge upscalers like i said it doesn't look better than my 32 inch setup with a upscaling dvd player that's like 20 bucks or, or 50 or 80 bucks so you're better off buying if you're going to watch DVDs a lot, you're better off buying an upscale DVD player, a 32-inch television, and you're all set. The picture will look pretty good. And I can confirm that because I did it myself. So, I'm just saying. So, the 820 is a great one um, player, though. I, I don't see why anyone would need more than this, even if you had a huge setup. Um, First of all, if they do get rid of physical copies at some point, I don't think they will. I think they'll keep the 4K disc for enthusiasts. I think DVD will eventually get the shit kicked out of it. But um, I don't think um, 4K is going anywhere for a really long time. But um, if they ever decide to get rid of it, um, I wouldn't spend $1,000 on a player anymore. And imagine spending all that money and the, the, the warranty and all that. Like, you have to send these players out. They don't give you replacements. So if your player breaks down, you have to send it to some warehouse and wait weeks or months, and you have no way to play your movies. That's another reason why you should never have one player. You should always have two, three, or more. You should never have one, because if it breaks, you're sh shit out of luck. Especially if you're a huge collector like me. I even have like three laser disc plays. Now, they're not all with surround sound. Only one of them has surround sound, but at least I can watch my laser discs if one of them breaks. If 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 I only had one laser disc player, wouldn't it be stupid to have this big collection? I mean, one day it would break, and I'd have hundreds of dollars worth of laser discs, and I wouldn't be able to play them. Um. The UB820 is also the first um, Blu-ray player in a long time that has a display with a time that I can actually read. Although it's very hard to read from a distance. I, I explained in other videos, I had a 3D Samsung before. The picture in the front of it was really, really good. Very big, you, you could read everything. On the UB820, um, it's kind of small. I have good eyesight so it can read it. 
but I kind of have to squint my eyes sometimes just to see it. So it's not big enough and it's not bright enough either. The, when you eject your disc out of the 820, um, the flap comes, the f plastic flap comes down and you can see the thing very good. But the plastic flap blocks the light. My guess is they blocked a lot of the light out so when, when you were watching a movie, um, the time doesn't distract you, but that should be an option. It does give you an option to adjust, adjust the brightness on it, but I have it at maximum and I can't read it very well. And then I decided, well, maybe I can leave it down, like I can, I can put something heavy on it so it stays down, but then it looks ugly when you're um, looking at the TV and the player and the flap is down. So, not a good idea. Um, I also like that this has dual ports in the back, but here's the problem with this now. Um, <laughs> basically, with this, is, this was a huge issue, because what I was trying to do was, I was trying to, um, what's it called? I forget what I was trying to do now. I was trying to, I was trying to send audio, no, I was trying to sound, yeah, I was trying to send the video, no, I was trying to send the audio to um one TV, uh, to the receiver, and I was trying to send, oh no, I forgot what the combination was. I was trying to use the audio and video on both ports, and it only allows you to use the full scale surround sound on one HP, HDMI port at a time, and the other one, if you've sent sound through, it's only PCM or something like that, and it's a big pain in the ass. But the UVA20 is a great port. Is a great player. I, I went to Best Buy the other day because I was at the um, Savers to check to see if they had anything again, like retro stuff. There was nothing there. I bought a Roku player to take to a friend's house or uh, just to use in random places in my house. Because if I have a sports night, so I sometimes, so I, let me say it again, I sometimes have to use more than one to television because there's more than one sport on it at a time. You're going to say, why not just use your iPad or your iPhone? I do. Sometimes I put three games on at once because there's minor league teams on. There's a major team on. The NBA can be on at the same time as hockey and what, what, not, what not. So when I looked in the Blu-ray section, they had four, three of the 820 stacked on top of each other. They had all the 800s and then the 700s. I just laughed because I I told you about the seven you be with um the Sony seven hundred whatever it's called it's like um one hundred eighty bucks I got it for fifteen dollars at Goodwill I think yeah was it a Goodwill I I think it was a Goodwill it had no plug or remote but I have all that I was able to get the plug and the remote and um it worked fine one hundred eighty dollars I got for fifteen bucks best deal of my life. And despite people complaining about it, I watched three episodes of Game of Thrones to test it out in 4K and it played fine. I did not test it on any double layered discs for movies. So when, the la when those layers switch over halfway through the movie, it might skip like my L LG used to. So I don't know, but still I got a pretty good deal out of it. Panasonic makes a way better play than a lot of others. People complain about Panasonic's menu. The menu really isn't that bad. It's just like the one I have down here for 3D. It's very basic, but what do you want? What do people want for a menu from a Blu-ray Blu player? All you should want out of the player is... is the, the movies to play correctly. Not glitch or freeze. It doesn't need to look fancy, it just needs to work. I don't know why people want a big fancy interface. Considering physical media is pretty dead, they're not going to focus on the menu um, and such. And this is a very good play. It does make a difference upscaling DVDs. But if you don't have Dolby Vision, don't bother even buying the damn thing because you're not using some of its best features. I'm not even using some of its best features right now right now 
I don't have a THX certified TV, I don't think, or something to do with the IMAX too. I don't have any of that. I don't have some of the surround sound options that's connected on the back, but I do have the Dolby Vision. I do have the um, 4K, so I'm getting the, something out of that. But if you're a 1080p or regular Blu-ray user, it's pointless to buy this. And even if you want to watch 3D, it's pointless to buy this too. It does have 3D option on it, but um, it'd be stupid to do that because um, you can buy th um, a ton of Blu-ray plays that are um, brand new. Well, not You can buy them on Amazon, not at the store, because stores don't really sell them anymore. And you can buy 3D players there. It's really, it's an enthusiast kind of Blu-ray player. Not many people are going to buy this to put in their house just for the hell of it. But it is a very acceptable player. And you, it has a lot of options for it. I mean, I don't know why people are complaining. Um, it has the automatic switch to Dolby Vision or HDR, which is a big plus. You don't have to remember to put a disc in and switch the mode on my Sony if you don't, if, if if you forget to turn Dolby Vision off, it'll turn it on when you're watching an HDR 10 only HD movie. So I put one in, it looked like shit. I remember once I watched a movie and it looked full, um, how do I explain it? It looked like shit. And then I found out I watched a whole movie in the wrong method. I felt like an idiot. I didn't turn the Dolby Vision option off. That's that. So, um, um, and it's no help for the people in Best Buy. The, 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 there's the same guy there every time, and he, he has, like, no personality to, at all. There used to be a really good guy there. He was a young kid. It looked like he was in college, just got out of college. Very nice kid. He would always go in the back and check if there was extra movies for me and if they had something. He was very helpful. One time he went out of his way to find a DVD in the back. But uh, I said, oh, I'm sorry. I don't want... I brought these out in case you wanted this format. I said I wanted... I was only looking for the, um, the show on Blu-rays. But I had to leave. I took one of the one of the things he brought... Um, that he... Forgive me. I took one of the things he brought out. And that was it. But now there's... He, he can't get any help. And the last time I told you the story about buying my play, the 820. I wanted to buy three of them. There was only one there. I asked the guy, is there any more in stock that you can bring out? No. Oh, but if you want more, you can take this one and you can order the other ones. I was, I was like... Oh no, I'm just going to buy it online. I, I, I don't want to buy them separate. Buy one, two on the internet and buy one of them at the store. That's stupid. So I just bought them all on the internet. It seems like in-store interactions. I love to go to the store itself all the time. But it's coming more and more extinct. I can't go to the store. They're not helpful anymore. So I have to negate that and say to myself, I can't do it. So, good luck, everyone. I hope you have some luck with all this shit. I hope it gets better for people. Because I know deep down inside that um, people are going to have problems and stuff. But the UV820 is a fantastic play and you should buy it. But I I'm not only recommend to have a Dolby Vision, but you should have this player on like an OLED television, television or a TV that's high grade. Don't buy it for a TV that's like an L regular LED. You gotta have like a television that has some kick behind it. If you have a five six hundred dollar TV, don't even bother. Only buy it for a TV that's like Dolby Vision capable and all LED or something that's worth fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. One of those ex expensive QLEDs or something like that. Don't. Buy something that's just a regular for, for <clears throat> regular LED because it's not going to make that much of a difference. I know people, it sounds kind of rude to always talk about the high grade stuff because, you know, not everyone could afford it. But you shouldn't buy something if it's not going to make a difference for you. All right. That's all I have to say. Good luck, everyone. Bye bye.